look at the world of architecture we see with Mises' 1928 Tower for Berlin, uh, the question might be, well, where's the sun? And this might have worked in Berlin, but we built it in Houston. And the windows are all closed, and with most products appearing not to have been designed for indoor use, this is actually a vertical gas chamber. Um, when I went to Yale, we had the first energy crisis. I was designing the first solar heated house in Ireland as a student, which I then built, which gives you a sense of my ambition. And Richard Myers, who was one of my teachers, kept coming over to my desk to give me criticism, and he would say, Bill, you've got to understand, solar energy has nothing to do with architecture. I guess he didn't read Vitruvius. Uh, in 1984, we did the first so-called green office in America for uh, environmental defense. We started asking manufacturers what were in their materials. They said they're proprietary, they're legal, go away. The only indoor quality work done in this country at that time was sponsored by R.G. Reynolds Tobacco Company, and it was to prove there was no danger from secondhand smoke in the workplace. So... All of a sudden, here I am graduating from high school in 1969, and this happens, and we realize that away went away. Remember we used to throw things away? Anybody point to away? And yet Noah has now shown us, for example, you see that little blue thing above Hawaii? That's the Pacific Gyre. It was recently dragged for plankton by scientists, and they found six times as much plastic as plankton. When asked, they said, it's kind of like a giant toilet that doesn't flush. Perhaps that's a way. So we're looking for the design rules of this. This is the highest biodiversity of trees in the world, Arian Jaya, 259 species of tree. And we describe this in book, Cradle to Cradle. The book itself is a polymer. It is not a tree. That's the name of the first chapter. This book is not a tree. Because in Poetics, as Margaret Atwood pointed out, uh, we write our history on the skin of fish with the blood of bears. And with so much polymer, what we really need is technical nutrition. And to use something as elegant as a tree, imagine this design assignment. Design something that makes oxygen, sequesters carbon, fixes nitrogen, distills water, accrues solar energy as fuel, makes complex sugars in food, uh, creates microclimates, uh, changes colors with the seasons, and self-replicates. Why don't we knock that down and write on it? So... We're looking at the same criteria as most people. You know, can I afford it? Does it work? Do I like it? We're adding the Jeffersonian agenda, and I come from Charlottesville, where I had the privilege of living in a house designed by Thomas Jefferson. We're adding life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, if we look at the word competition, I'm sure most of you have used it. You know, most people don't realize it comes from the Latin competare, which means strive together. It means the way Olympic athletes train with each other. They get fit together, and then they compete. The Williams sisters compete. One wins Wimbledon. So we've been looking at the idea of competition as a way of, of co cooperating in order to get fit together. And the Chinese government, has now, I work with the Chinese government now, has, uh, has taken this up. We're also looking at survival of fittest, not in just competition, terms in our modern context of destroy the other or beat them to the ground, but really to fit together and build niches and have growth that is good. Now, most environmentalists don't say growth is good because in our lexicon, asphalt is two words assigning a